Hello and welcome to this episode of Hampton Roads Business Live. My name is Rory Graham and I'm your host and today we have the pleasure of having with us Linda Jones who is the Public Relations Director for Union Mission Ministries in Norfolk. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, I had the chance to have a conversation with you and I can tell you that uh, Union Mission is not, I won't say not at all, but not only what I thought it was. So why don't you give us an overview and then we'll kind of jump into it. Sounds great. Uh, the Union Mission is the largest homeless shelter in the Hampton Roads region. Actually, I think we're the largest homeless shelter in the state. And uh, every day we house over 375 men, women, and children, providing them with food, clothing, shelter, job and life skills training, and much more. Our, our slogan is actually food, clothing, shelter, and so much more. Good and, slogan. Yeah. Yes. So, so, I mean, I had seen things like a picture in the paper where, you know, someone was getting a Christmas meal or someone had a cot or a bed or something for the night in the winter or something. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what I thought it was. Um, but you're right. It is so much more. So let's talk about, uh, at, I think, first, how are you funded? Let's just get the money out of the way. Okay. Uh, we've never uh, received any state or federal funding. Mm -hmm. uh, we are totally supported by individuals, churches, businesses, other organizations who um, donate to us. So that's, that's t our total funding is, that, is through that private funding. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that, that's good. Uh, yeah. uh, as considering what you've done, uh, when I took the tour, I was really impressed. Um, so what percentage... This is a question I ask you too. What percentage of the f donations go to the homeless? A pretty large percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, we're required to uh, to be as a 501c3 uh, to have it uh, under 23 percent go to administrative costs, and I think we're at around 20 percent or 18 to 20 percent uh -huh. as far as uh, so the balance of it goes to help the okay. people that we help. And and. and um, I, I can say from the tour and everything, I mean, you've got employees there, you've mm -hmm. got um, quite a big staff of people to help all these people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, what did you say, 200, 300? Uh, did you? Employees? No, 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 no. Oh. People that you help. Oh, no, 375. 375, approximately, so almost yeah. 400 people. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people to take care of. It so is. it does take some people to do that. Um, so you're located in Norfolk. But you help people outside Norfolk as well, right? Absolutely. We're a regional shelter, even right. though we're located. So we help anyone who comes to us from any area. Okay. I mean, the majority of the people are from Hampton Roads, but okay. uh, yes, anyone who comes. All right. And, mm -hmm. and so how, uh, how do you qualify for services with you? Is there, well, is there a thing you have to do? <laughs> not really. Um, yes and no. I mean, you ha we, we require that people have IDs. But uh, when they come in, if they don't have an ID, we'll help them get that. So really, we're, our doors are open to anyone who'll come, who, anyone okay. who needs our help, basically. Now, now you're a Christian organization. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be a Christian to? No, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we are a Christian organization, and people know that up front. Right. When they come to us, uh, we let them know they are required to go to chapel services, and, and the men are, and the women go to Bible studies. But... But no, uh, you can be, have no religion, any religion, uh, it doesn't matter. We help anyone who needs our help. Okay, all right. And that's what I observed when I was mm -hmm. taking the tour too. Um, uh, all right, so now let's talk about a job skill or life skill training, which is something I had no clue you right. were involved in. I was really impressed with what I saw there. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, when someone comes in, they come to us because usually because they're hungry, they have nowhere else to turn. So we have to provide for those physical needs first, the food, clothing, shelter, toiletries, shower, clean clothing, all of those things. But once they're, they, um, we give them those things, then we we look at, actually each person has to sit down with a case manager and the case manager determines why they're homeless and helps them to lay out a plan how they get out of that homelessness. So depending upon what their situation is, we offer job and life skills training. So we offer anything from, uh, we teach uh, computer skills, we teach resume writing, how to interview for a job, we teach finance and budgeting. Uh, we have classes in relapse prevention and healthy boundaries and uh, anger management and conflict resolution. So all kinds of different skills, depending upon what the need is, 
then we look to either our staff provides it or sometimes volunteers will come in and teach a class. Because everybody's different and everybody's mm -hmm. coming at this for a different reason. Absolutely. Because I, I know that that's, uh, we talked about a list of reasons that people do, are, are homeless and some of it's just a life event that happened and their, their whole world turned upside down really fast. Loss of a job or a spouse mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, sure. So it, it's not people addicted to drugs, all of them, or, or alcohol or something all the time. I mean, I think some people have a, including me, <laughs> have a preconceived idea. Sure. And it's not always that, that's not always it. So. No, it definitely isn't. We, uh, we do have drug, people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, but we have uh, a large number of people that have physical illnesses, serious physical mm -hmm. uh, illnesses, and they haven't had insurance, so they have no way to, uh, so by the time they get to us, their, their physical uh, issues are, are exacerbated, and, and so they need help. Yes, yes, you did. And then we have people who have uh, mental illness who can probably function just like you and I can if they have the proper medication and there's someone guiding them and helping them do that. And then again, you mentioned uh, somebody, let's say uh, somebody loses a job because their, their company downsized. So, uh, or their house might have burned down. There's just many, many different reasons for people being homeless. So it's not just an easy fix of go out and get a job. And again, they, many pe times people have suffered some kind of trauma in their lives. And so all of these things, and, and they come with many of these burdens combined. So it makes it difficult to just, you know, get the job and move out. So it takes time to work with them and to, to get them the help that they need. Okay, so through the case manager, they, they tailor a program to help them. Yes. Their specific organization. Okay, mm -hmm. do you work with uh, any other organizations that help the homeless? Oh yes, we work with many organizations. We, pro probably every organization in the, in the community. We refer back and forth because not one organization can do, provide everything. I mean, we have a wellness program. We work with many health agencies to provide health care for our homeless. We work with all the different agencies that, you know, and they work, they will in turn work with us because, you know, we are a large shelter and so they may provide this service, but they have to uh, send someone to us because they don't have the shelter services. Right. So we work with a lot of other area agencies. Well, well when I was there, I noticed, uh, I noticed I was taking a little tour and you all, you, you had a men's shelter, mm -hmm. uh, a women's shelter, and when I, use the word shelter, it's, it's really nice. I mean, you know, very well managed, it's, it's really done right. Um, so uh, the, what I was picturing before I took the tour was not it at all. So uh, I, I uh, and I got to meet a lot of people there that were receiving help mm -hmm. and all of them were so nice. Uh, and um, it, it, I was, uh, you, you know, um, I was just kind of, uh, very well i was very impressed with the whole organization um so uh, my last question is um is uh well no i already asked that one uh, so i don't have a last question did i forget anything because you stepped on a bunch of these questions i did i'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry I, i'm jumbled up all over right you know and you did mention something mm -hmm. and about how friendly everybody was and yeah, you and you talked really to a lot were. of people and and our facilities when we opened this facility and we moved out there in 2009 and we built a new men's shelter and we recently uh, built a new women's shelter, we wanted, it, people come with so many burdens mm -hmm. and we wanted this to be a place where they will feel welcome and, and it's with a, a wonderful, a beautiful, peaceful atmosphere. And so when some, one of the first the things I hear from people many times is, you welcome me, you didn't judge me, you didn't, at, you know, you accepted me just for who I am. And many times you hear things like, you love me when no one ever loved me before. Mm -hmm. So our staff is very warm and welcoming and the people feel that. And you know, when you have so many burdens and someone accepts you, and even though sometimes it might have been because of the poor choices that you've made, um, we start over and they have a second chance. And that's what we want to give them, the chance to get on their feet again, to be become productive citizens of society again. And you have to restore your dignity, their dignity and self-respect before you can provide those other things. Well, that's what I, I saw uh, and uh, learned when I w went there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of the reasons we're doing this interview. Right. I thought it was important for people to know because uh, it's not just giving someone a meal yeah. or, a, or, or a warm place at night, you know, for a night. Um, it's, it's, it is so much more than that. It's teaching them or preparing them to get on with their life be a productive member of the of the community, and um, 
and that's something that we need a lot more of. And uh, so, you know, uh, I I appreciate you coming in and sharing that with us. I hopefully we can we can help help uh, get the word out. So, um, if you are in a position where you can donate, uh, I'm sure you can call them. There's probably many ways you could donate, but uh, they do need, as, as she said, uh, they they do accept private donations, uh, private help from companies, from individuals. Uh, this is not a, um, a state thing or a federal thing. Um, so, uh, but they do a lot of good work. Almost 400 people uh, are are being helped right now, and um, they could they could use your help. So, if you're in a position to do that, I strongly uh, suggest that you give them a call. I'm sure they would be willing to uh, take it and to take any help that you could give them. I, I. You know, uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, you guys are doing great work, and I hope it continues. My pleasure. And I would just say to your audience, come for a tour like you did. Yeah, and You'll they can really see, yeah. see that it's not what people think. No, it wasn't what I thought at all. You know, and everybody, all the employees were just so nice. Um, they didn't know me from Adam, but they were all just so nice. And then the people they were helping, they... <laughs> They, that, I was really impressed. That's all. I mean, mm -hmm. I already said that, but but I was, and and it really changed my mind to what you all are doing. Very very good organization, helping an awful lot of people mm -hmm. right here in Hampton Roads, and we need that. We certainly okay? do. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.